Yeah. All right. Uh, next thing to show uh, location of an image. We have someone here. Uh, let's see. Who's never done the? Who's never seen the eye chart, chart demo? Has everyone seen this? You've never seen it. Okay. Has everyone else I've, seen it? I've seen it. Yeah, Brad hasn't seen it either. He's got one. With the back. Brad's got the. Uh, and you've got. Uh, are you nearsighted or farsighted? Nearsighted. Okay. You want to uh, take your glasses off and do this demo for us? You'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, even tell you, we'll even tell you what the first letter is. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna count squares. Okay. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll be eight squares away. And here's the regular I try. You read the first line. It's E. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Second line. I'm okay. Yes. Yeah, so. Third. So fifth line, not even close. Okay, so, so fifth line down there where my finger is, and uh, I'm going to give you one eight squares away. You hold this. This is an eye chart that's a uh, mirror image. <coughs> Facing. You can put it right under your chin if you'd like. So it's, it's in line with your eyes. Tell me how to move the mirror so you can see it. <laughs> okay, can you read the first line? Second? Third? Can't even see it. Okay, so same distance away, but he's now and can't see it at all. Where is he focusing? Yeah, the Where image is, is back away. there. So yeah. where should I stand so he can see it like this side before? Close. Yeah, so one, two, three, four. So four squares away. Can you read the third line? Okay, fourth line? J. I don't know why. Just going over your demo. Oh, that's fine. But I definitely read the third. J. E. U. L. W. Y. Sure. And the fifth? No, so same as before. So he sees it just like he did before. He's focusing there. You know, a lot of times kids get um, nervous to doing this demo, you know, kind of like Brad is. Um, <laughs> you know, they don't want to, uh, you know, it's, Troubling to read the letters, so we'll just ask them. You know, can you read the letters? You know, instead of saying you know, actually going through it like they're at the um, at the eye doctor, and uh, you know, can you read this line? Can you read this line? And eventually, they'll get to the spot where they'll say, "Next demo that we do for them, or you know, in whatever order that you like." We bring out one of our very best mirrors. This mirror right here, and kids will say. That's a pretty crappy mirror, <laughs> and we'll agree. Okay, it's it's a pretty crappy mirror. But there's a time when this mirror acts a lot like a mirror, right? And I'll ask the students, "Hey, when does a piece of glass act a lot like a mirror?" And they'll say, "Yeah, when it's dark outside, right? When you're inside and it's dark outside, if you hear a noise outside, you've got to either a turn off all the lights in your house, or, or not all of them, but in that room, or b go up to the to the um, window and look out, right? Well, the reason why is because I think there's about a 95-5 rule that when light comes and hits a piece of glass, 95% of the light comes through and 5% bounces off. So you can see that 5%. In fact, you probably can see my finger here. You know, or if I brought out this great object, brought out, not off, the candle. Right. You probably can see the candle reflection there. That's because you can see the 5%. Now, when it's dark outside, that 5% that's hitting here and coming back overrides the 95% that's coming in because there's hardly anything coming in because it's so dark outside. So what we do with this demo is uh, we light our candles. So if I turn off the lights, yeah. Is it Mark? Yes. Could you pull up those two shades? Because that'll make, make it a little better, even. There you go. Yeah, I do the black slide. Pull it over to the right a little bit. There you go. All right, so now you probably see, uh, you see two candles, right? You see one candle here, ow. Uh, one here, right? And then one about here, right? Ow. Just so you know. <laughs> 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 if 
my players hot. Um, but what I can, what I usually do when I have the students do it is I'll, I'll um, take one of the candles and I'll purposely pull it too far back. You can just, yeah, just pull it to the side a little bit, and then let it up, and it'll, it'll catch. It'll be dark enough that it'll work just fine. So what I'll ask the students to do is, hey, when you see my candle and the image of your candle line up, say now. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. So just say now, nice and loud, like we're in class. Now. 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 And uh, part of the reason why it's swept across, well, not part of the reason, the reason why is because it's too far back. So the whole parallax idea is you guys are getting to line up at different times. And if I bring it too close, no. No. I, I, was, I must have been, oh, that is a lot closer than I thought. Here we go. Anyhow, we can then, no. and you can move right in there, right? Now, it's amazing to the students is that I was able to do that so quickly. I can take this away, and then I can just near, put it right back in there. So I'll ask him, hey, how in the world was I able to do that so quickly? And usually, one of the students will say, exactly, I see the same demo. Right. See, if I move my candle here, I've got my one out, two, <laughs> three. Okay? So I see three candles, and you see three candles. So I get the same demo you do. So all I need to do is line up my image near with the real candle over there, and then it lines up perfectly. Now we can do some careful measuring now, and I can take my finger, Ow. exactly, <laughs> and I can measure here, and then measure here, and we'll see, hey, the object is always going to be located the same distance in front of the mirror as the image is behind the mirror. Kind of like with the eye charts, right? We had a question about it. Um, when Brad was holding this eye chart above his, under his chin, and looking into the mirror, the image was located two times as far away as the mirror, right? So if the mirror was three feet away, the image was six feet, six feet away from Brad, right? So that's why he had a harder time seeing it. Now, some people were asking about all the t-shirts back there. Uh, this is just kind of random. Uh, all those t-shirts are the physics cheat shirts. And what we do is uh, we give them those shirts and they have all the equations written on them upside down so they can read it. Wow. All right, so that's a little bonus. Um, but then, now, uh, one of the best ways to be able to uh, see if the object really is the same distance in front and behind the mirror, or the image is the same distance behind the mirror, is just get your eyeball down there. It just looks straight in there. And it burns. It burns. Don't you think see it? But uh, <laughs> probably you know, probably one of the highlights. Of course, you know, the, the dumber you make yourself look, um, the more students like it. Let me go back to that uh, video here. There we go. The music is the best. And as I tell my students, uh, Keith was in the AV club in college. So I see the project, yeah, and that was a senior project. Who said seeing is believing? What are you seeing? Do you believe it? Now it's amazing when Keith teaches, I was in the AV club in college, so that's our best <laughs> Moving away and to the side shows you the whole scene. Now explain what you saw. Nicely done. You know, I just thought of, I thought of this the other day. Uh, a good way that I'm going to do this next year is uh, I'll show that first clip, then I'll do the demo. You know, because we usually do it afterwards, but it would be kind of nice to show them that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that first clip and get them guessing. But how you got that little ding, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, that was perfect. That was I, uh, I movie. I movie back before there was I movie. Exactly. Yeah. That was me movie. Yeah. 